being overtaken just a little bit by what do you think type of evidence, especially if it's available for a 100% identification match, and that's DNA, okay, like Ava said. But now that we're able to have DNA, we're able to pinpoint who that is. But sometimes we don't have the evidence that holds DNA, because it has to be some type of bodily fluid, a hair uh, that has the root attached to it, because we have to have some type of skin cells in order to do a DNA match. And so if we don't, the other way, and the longest known way that we've been able to stand up in court and say, this belongs to you and puts you at our crime scene as fingerprints. Okay, because it is one thing that none of us have alike. Okay, identical twins don't even have the same fingerprints. Everybody's are different. And so it's just one way for us to be able to have those different levels of analysis. Okay, now on your discussion question, I asked you guys, I believe it is, to define fraction ridges. Does anybody know what fraction ridges stand for? Or friction, sorry. Okay, so friction ridges is where your skin is raised up on your fingers. If you look down, you see all those curves. The reason why you see those curves is because you have a friction ridge. It is raised up from where the normal level of your skin would be. All right, so if you look at your arm, it's flat. Turn it over and you have all those little things. You can even take your fingernail and kind of go across of it and you feel how it you know, feels kind of like sandpaperish, something in a way. But those are your friction ridges. So it's a raised portion of the outside layer that form rows that curve and loop. ridges or our fingerprints, what is this called? What's the study of? 